What's going on, everybody? It is Jamie Shaw here on the Absolute Basketball Experience. In today's episode, we caught up with Eastern Kentucky star Jamaru Brown. We talk about his navigating through the NBA draft process. We talk about his incredible career that he's so far had at Eastern Kentucky, went through a little bit of recruiting stuff, went through being from Durham, and so much more. Before we get into the interview, though, we have our normal ask that you subscribe to this channel as well as give this specific video a thumbs up. And also, if you would, in your comments, we want to hear who your favorite player is from Durham, North Carolina. There's been a lot of good ones. We want to hear who your favorite is. Go ahead and drop the name here in the comments. We look forward to reading those. And if you enjoy the interview, please feel free to uh, spread it across your platforms. Let everybody hear what Jamaru's saying and, and all that kind of stuff. But without further ado, here is Eastern Kentucky star Jamaru Brown on the Absolute Basketball Experience with Jamie Shaw. What is going on, everybody? It is Jamie Shaw here on the Absolute Basketball Experience. I am here with Eastern Kentucky star Jamaru Brown, also a North Carolina Durham native. Jamaru, how you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Trying to figure out this quarantine thing day yeah. by day. Yeah. Um, so you're a big Bruno Mars fan. What is your go-to song with his, and what is it about Bruno that you like? Um, when I Was Your Man is, uh, is my go-to song. I mean, I've seen that song word for word. But um, I honestly just, you know what I'm saying, listen to him. He had that big, like, 20, around, like, 2012, I was, like, in middle school. He had that big, like, showing the, like, music and stuff. And I was just like, you know what I'm saying, I just fell in love with it, honestly. So. Yeah, so is, is that your go-to when you go sing karaoke? You said you sing it all the time. You go do, like, karaoke or stuff or just singing it in, yeah. the, in the locker yeah, room or whatever? Sure. Yeah, no, nah, not in the locker room or not. <laughs> When I probably when I'm cleaning up or something, I'll turn on some Bruno Mars and just vibe out. So I feel you. That's cool. Um, so after averaging 19.3 points, uh, you got conference player of the year and stuff as a uh, as your senior year in Southern Durham. You got close to 10 or so offers, uh, Eastern Carolina or Eastern Kentucky, uh, Florida Atlantic, Evansville. What was it about Eastern Kentucky that really drew you in? Um, coach, honestly, um, he was the first coach to talk to me in the morning, first coach to talk to me at night. Um, he just showed that he wanted me. And uh, like the whole staff, honestly, it was just, it seemed like, like I would be crazy not to, you know what I'm saying, commit to those guys. So, so your freshman year going into Eastern Kentucky, uh, you were an instant hit in the OVC. Uh, you went for double figures in, in 25 different games, but you didn't start until your 14th game of the season. Um, and then you went on for double figures in 18 of your final 20. What was that feeling like when AW called you and let you know that you would be starting that game against Austin P? Man, it's the great. It's one of the greatest feelings, honestly. Just off the strength of like um, that whole my whole um, the non-conference and stuff. It was just uh, me in practice every day, just showing that I was trying. I could be an everyday guy. And coach, coach told me um, when he was recruiting me that it wasn't going to be any nothing was going to be handed to you. Mm -hmm. And he wanted me to work for everything, and that was um, one of the things that I liked about coach. And you know, you know me, you you know me growing up in high school, like nothing, like I, I have to, I had to grind for everything that I got. So um, it was just one of those things where you know what I'm saying I was I was appreciative of that. I didn't want anything handed to me, and I wanted to work for it. So it was a great feeling. Who's the first person you called and told, like, yo, I'm going to be starting tomorrow? <laughs> my mom. Yeah. My mom. So my mom, as soon as, uh, as, soon as he told me, um, and I mean, you know what I'm saying, we got, like, game day meetings or stuff like that and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So yeah, as, soon as, she, as, soon as, he, as soon as I left the meeting, I called her. I thought I was going to be starting that. I'm sure that was an exciting phone call on both ends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the past year, you were averaged the 12th most points in the country for sophomores, fourth most in OBC at 18.4. It seems like you're really locked in this year. Honestly, um, it's just coach put a lot of trust in me this year. Um, in the summertime, I stayed both sessions of the summer. He put a lot of trust in me. He told me what I was getting into before the season even started and when he was recruiting me um, as a um, senior. So uh, he told me I was going to have to grow fast. And honestly, it wasn't it wasn't anything. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't, I was, I was, I wasn't ready for it. Um, I was ready to take that. Now role. connected to Buck's iPhone. I'm sorry. Uh, You're fine. <laughs> I was ready to take that role. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, I was ready to take that role as a um, as a sophomore. So, yeah. Um, during conference play, you 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 heated up. You went for over twenty per game. Uh, even with teams game planning for you, knowing who you are, expecting you to come. What is it about the bright lights, the big moments that really gets you going? 
That's a good question. Um, they they threw a lot of different uh different different defensive at me. Um, UT Martin actually ran a boxing one on me this uh this conference play. Uh, they threw, they threw a lot of um like second uh secondary defenders at me a lot. But the big lights, man, it's just honestly I treat every game the same. Um, just trying to go in there. Uh, my end goal is to win the game, of course. Uh, get my teammates involved, and. You know what I'm saying? Just compete like this. I love to compete, so I'm just a huge competitor. So every game, I'm trying to kind of treat every game the same. Uh, just go in there and try to win. So obviously, you only just com completed your sophomore year. This past season, you became the 35th player in EKU history to score over a thousand points, and you're currently seventh all time on the steals list with 154. Your career is currently shaping up to be one of the best ever in school history. Does this come as a surprise to you? Yeah, it's a huge surprise, man. It's a huge surprise. It's other the for like I really did not see myself getting to this point, man. I really did not see myself getting to this point. Um, with the recruiting, my recruiting was slow, and all that stuff. I didn't see myself getting to this point, but now that I'm, now that I'm here, man, I just, I just, I fell in love with the grind. I uh, love the work. I love the process. Trusting the process, man, and, and it can't happen to anybody if you put the work in. Honestly, so. Um, you've gone for 30 plus points five times in your career. Um, but on November 15th of this year, you went for 41 against Western Kentucky. Uh, during the game, you're 16 of 28 from the field, five of six from the line. You also added three steals and two assists. Take us through what was going through your mind leading up to and during that game. Honestly, man, I knew, I kind of knew like going into the shoot around, um, earlier that day, I knew what was going to happen that night, man. I was just feeling super good. Um, Coach, we had a we had a great scout on that team. Uh, the guard, we we knew the guards. Um, they kind of were like uh, liabilities on defense, and so coach just said, "Go at them uh, the whole game." So uh, I hit my first like my my first pull up, and I was like, "Yeah, this is gonna be a great night." So yeah, coach says coach says go at them. You're like bet, <laughs> <laughs> say less. Say less so. Uh, so coming out of this year uh, with all the success you have, you've decided to clear for the NBA draft. What all went into that decision for you? Um, honestly, it's just something to, uh, something for me. Um, I think it was more so me and my um, belief in myself, mm -hmm. uh, just showing myself that I was ready to take that next step and that I was going to take my future serious and this is what I want to do. So um, me and Coach was talking about it uh, during the season as well. Um, you know what I'm saying? Just all the strength of the season that I was having, it was just like, man, we win the conference. So he said we win the conference. You know where you're going. You know where you're going. But, um, but me and Coach talked about it a lot. But um, it was just one of those things that me showing myself honestly that I'm ready to take my future serious. So, and expanding on that a little bit, uh, Coach A. W. Hamlin, he's been very supportive of you, very vocally supportive of you. What was that conversation like with him when you when you're both finally like, all right, this is happening. We're submitting. Uh. It's it's always it's always it's literally always been the thing. Um, coach has seen has seen uh, that in me, and he's been preaching to me how you should be a pro every day in what you do. Mm -hmm. And um, honestly, he just we just we talk about it all the time. He wants he wants me to be a pro. He wants you know what I'm saying he wants me to uh, reach my goals, take care of my family. So uh, it's just it's kind of like everyday conversation. Honestly, so. And what does that support that public support that he has for you in doing this? What does that mean to you? It's great, man. It's great. Uh, that's my guy. Uh, he tells me all the time. That's my. Uh, that's my guy. He, we, he, we have a great relationship. He's the type of coach that will chew me out in practice, and then I, we act like nothing happens afterwards. So, he's that's my guy, man. I love him to death. Uh, this is a very different time with the quarantine, the coronavirus, and everything going through. Um, how are you navigating through that process? Um, working out. I'm still working out, still getting in the gym, taking care of my body. Um, just, you know what I'm saying, just staying on top of my game, trying to stay at the top of my game uh, every day, working out two times a day. So, honestly, it's just, it's honestly, it's, I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's difficult because, like, everybody's, you know what I'm saying, like, at home, everybody's, mom, like, my mom's at home, like, everybody's not going to work and stuff like that. But, um, honestly, it's, it's the same for me. I'm just still getting in the gym. Uh, I'm just at home. I'm not at school. So, it's just kind of different, but everything is kind of What does a typical day look like for you? Wake up, uh, to usually uh, 10 a.m., go to the gym, get some work. I got to work out at 2 today, but 10 a.m., go to the gym, and then get a lift in, 
and get some shots up. And then 9 a.m. I got another uh, 9 p.m. I got another workout tonight. So just Good. staying in it. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotta, and, I gotta, and I gotta get my food in and stuff too. Gotta get my meals in. So <laughs> just eat or something. Yeah. It, it, it's crazy uh, maintaining your body. It's the stuff you learn in college as opposed to high school and all that stuff. But if, you know, yeah. you, you have to be on a strict regimen. Exactly. Um, so you just finished your sophomore year and you're afforded the ability to either decide to stay in the draft or come back. Um, what information are you looking for in order to help you make that decision? Um, Honestly, just get in front of – well, honestly, my whole plan was to get in front of those, like, NBA teams, get a workout in, get a few workouts in, and then get with that feedback or whatever they tell me there and then take it back to um, school and get ready for my junior year. Mm -hmm. um, but that that's just uh, the type of, like, feedback that I was trying to get, basically, uh, what, they, what I'm going to have to do to play at that level mm -hmm. and stay at that level. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, get in front of them, make sure they know your name to watch out for you. Um, so you're a noted bucket getter on offense and you're a noted ball hawk on defense. Um, who would you say or who have you heard that your game resembles? Um, well, my 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 idol is John Wall. It's just how this jump of me, you know what I'm saying, coming up in Raleigh and him being um, that guy. But um, John Wall and Drew Holiday, uh, Drew Holiday is one guy that I say that I study and I want to, you know what I'm saying, just uh, kind of resume my game after just because he's a ball hawk on defense and it's, it's tough to guard him in transition and stuff like that uh, on the offensive side. So I think he's pretty tough. For people who may not have seen you play before, how would you describe your game? <clears throat> That's a great question. Uh, probably. That's a great question. Uh, the two-way player, uh, of course, um, is the, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, two-way player, I'd say, two two-way players. So, yeah. so you went to, you know, Southern Durham High School, um, you know, in Durham, North Carolina. Looking around, it seems like Bull City guys are really thriving right now in basketball. You got yourself, you got Josh Hall, you got uh, Albert Ellis, Jay Huff. I mean, the list goes on of, of Durham guys. Um, what do you think it is? you know, that is about a Durham player that you know that you're going to get and that, that drives them to success? Um, toughness um, and the tough mentality. Um, I grew up in Raleigh uh, most of my life, but the time that I went to Durham, it was just, it was kind of, it's, it's kind of like the same, the same mindset. You got to be tough. You got to be, you know what I'm saying? You got to be uh, gritty um, on, on the court and stuff like that. But, um, <laughs> but. And furthering that uh, notion, what is something you can guarantee people they can expect from Jamaru Brown, both as a person and on the floor? Um, shoot, man. Uh, that's a great question, man. You, you, gave me, you gave me some real good question today, questions today. But uh, probably um, this genuine, um, genuine person uh, going to, um, you know what I'm saying, just try to make sure you're happy. music probably uh um all-star you know that song uh, you know that song yeah all-star probably flash uh just because uh that that um that i love that show i just love that show so Man, trust the process. Trust the process. That's all. Yeah. And I love, I love all you guys. Uh, I'm doing this for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just hope uh, I, um, I'm saying that make you guys happy. So yeah. Sir, appreciate you. Appreciate you.
Thank you. And there you have it. Thank you guys very much for tuning in to this episode with Eastern Kentucky star Jamaru Brown on the Absolute Basketball Experience. It was great catching up with him, great seeing where his mind's at, what his process is looking like, and getting uh, some stuff said about what he's doing so far during his career in Eastern Kentucky. It's been, it's been great to watch. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you enjoyed what Jamaru had to say, go ahead and spread it across your platforms, and we'd be uh, happy to see you do that. Uh, but for tuning in, thank you very much. For Jamaru Brown, I am Jamie Shaw on the Absolute Basketball Experience. Thank you guys very much.